There's this age-old question, right? Behavior, cognition, and really just about any trait you can think of is a combination of genetics and the environment. Um, But how that balance works and how that happens biologically continues to be an open question. Duke Puppy Kindergarten, you want to take puppies at their most cutest. Don't go to the left but also at their final period of rapid brain development. And we play these sort of fun cognitive games to see if we can come up with a cognitive profile to predict who is most likely to make it as a service dog. Trial two, pretty good. Quick learner. The dogs that are trained for service roles um, have certain maybe predispositions uh, for certain useful temperaments and behaviors. And then they also, of course, are extensively trained to exhibit specific behaviors. So on the temperament side of things, um, service dogs have to be very calm and not distractible. On the trained behavior side of things, we're also interested in measuring those sorts of behaviors that might not directly be the service behaviors, but might be related to them in some way attention towards a human, for example. We have a task called the impossible task. And what we're seeing is that some dogs immediately focus on trying to get food out of a container that they previously have gotten food out of, but we've locked it and made it impossible or really hard to get it open. Okay. Some dogs, they realize I can't get that thing open and they immediately look up to the person and they start barking or you know making eye contact trying to communicate with the person we think that eye contact is quite important for building the bond between dogs and humans um there are a few reasons for that one is oxytocin there's been some work showing that when dogs and human their their humans stare at each other for long periods of time it releases oxytocin in Um, both dogs and humans Um, and oxytocin is the is often thought of as the bonding hormone or the love hormone and what we've learned is the dog that really just tries to solve the problem on its own those dogs tend to be really great at problems that have to do with finding things like in dogs that are going to be trained in detection work wow that's amazing (laughs) the dog who realize there's a problem they can't solve and kind of look up and ask for help in a way. Those dogs tend to be dogs that are going to do really, really well for service and for helping people with disabilities. You're backwards. You can not see it from there. You want to go around? Come here. And so we've been tracking how their cognition starts to emerge. In the behaviors and cognitive traits that I have studied, we see quite a wide range of paired abilities. And so the interesting thing is different behaviors are more or less heritable. Um, and the more heritable traits, the variation is more explained by their, their genetics, whereas the less heritable traits is more presumably explained by the environment and experience and things like that. So in the canine companions population, The reaction to a novel object, which in this case is a robotic cat, um, is particularly highly heritable. Um, And so this is something that we we show them this robotic cat, they interact with it for a couple minutes, and we score these videos for various different behaviors. And then we take all of that data and it basically reduces down to Uh, Is the dog's reaction a bolder reaction or a shyer reaction? Um, And so that kind of bold, shy reaction um, is actually surprisingly highly heritable. I do not have a dog. I actually have cats. (laughs) Yeah, I, so I used to joke that my dirty little professional secret is that I'm actually a cat person. The problem is they're a little less cooperative. (laughs) So, um, the one really cool thing about studying dogs is that they're pretty eager participants in the kinds of tasks that we do. Um, 
Cats are, of course, infamous for not really caring what your agenda is. They only really want to do what they want to do. Um, and so if you test 100 dogs, you're pretty likely to get good data on maybe 80 or 90 of them. If you test 100 cats, I think you'd be lucky to get good data on like 30 of them. <laughs> dogs like people can continue learning for their whole lives. And any given behavior is trainable. 